What's better, the new M3 MacBook Pro or the 2021 MacBook Pro? Let's talk about it. Now, I usually start these off by talking about the builds of the computers. But the thing is, is that the build is pretty much the same on both of these devices. They both weigh the same, they're both built the same, they both have the same ports. It's pretty much all the same. If you have that older computer, then you're gonna love the new one, obviously. But I'm guessing that you already knew that and that you're more concerned about the new space black color on the M3 MacBook. Now, the M3 MacBook Pro has been my daily driver now for like the past week almost more than a week and I have some bad news see when I got this computer and I unboxed it I was super excited about the color I was really looking forward to having a black MacBook and um I'm not gonna lie it is not black everybody that I've showed this computer to has agreed that this is not black this is not what black looks like the best way that I can describe it is that this is space or gray this isn't space gray like the old laptop it's space or gray now why they chose to make it so bright I don't know they added these new coatings to make it more resistant to fingerprints and things of that nature. But fact of the matter is that this is definitely not black, especially not space black. Daddy, chill. What the hell is even that? Like, I don't know if you know what space looks like, but that's real black and that's not what this is. So yeah, I'll give it pity points for handling fingerprints better than my, my current MacBook. But honestly, the color here is actually kind of disappointing. It doesn't look bad by any means. I don't want the impression to be that, you know, this color looks bad or anything like that. But if you're going into this thinking that it's black, don't expect black. Black is not the color that you're gonna get. And if we continue looking at this computer, everything is pretty much the same, even when looking at the display. You still have that 14.2 inch mini LED display. It's ProMotion up to 120 Hertz. And for the nerds that are on the Apple website, yes, the new display is technically 100 nits brighter, but like no one cares, you're not gonna notice that. So not much difference there and definitely not a reason to upgrade if you're coming from a computer like the M1 Pro. As for the battery life, I'm not gonna lie, I have to share this with you guys. I think I've been spoiled. See, I was using the MacBook Air and then the 15 inch MacBook Air for a while before picking up any of these MacBook Pros. And I don't know, something about having a 20 hour computer life just became normal to me. You know, you didn't have to worry about whether or not you had fully charged the night before. You could easily go through an entire working day and then get home, maybe relax, do some content consumption, watch Netflix, play games, I don't know, whatever y'all do on your MacBooks at home. You could do all of that within the span of a day and not really worry about battery life. And then I got the M3 MacBook Pro and the 12 hours just wasn't it. Like, I don't know, maybe I need to like snap back to reality, but for me, 12 hours just doesn't cut it. And I think the reason that this is so annoying for me especially is because, you know, like this computer, this isn't a MacBook Air, right? The Air is designed for people that just want a simple computing device, right? Check your email, send test messages, search up recipes, I don't know, whatever y'all do on that. But the Pro is made for Pro users right? People that are using battery intensive tasks that use all of the power that the laptop has to offer. But you can't do that if your computer is dead. Can't believe I have to explain that. Like if you guys watched the day in the life video, link in the description, um, you'll see that the computer literally doesn't last the full day. And again, if you're somebody that's just browsing the web, more power to you. But this is a pro device and I'm expecting to be able to do pro level things for more than just two hours. And yes, I know you might be wondering, well, doesn't this also apply to the M1 Pro computer as well? Yeah, yeah, it does. So there we go, rant over. Now let's talk about the chips. Now, instead of getting technical and going into the Geekbench scores and comparing all of these different things, I'm gonna make this very simple between M3 Pro and M1 Pro, the actual name of the chips that are on these computers. If you have a computer that starts with an M, do not buy this computer. If you have an M1 Mac or an M2 Mac, or well, that's it, but you know what I mean. Do not buy this M3 computer expecting to see those same huge leaps that we saw when, you know, back when M1 first came out. I remember when M1 came out, it absolutely changed the game for me when it came to looking at the Mac computers. I mean, think about it before then, we were on the Intel chips the Intel chips. <laughs> Those computers were like slow garbage. They would catch on fire. You, you like wouldn't be able to do anything with it. And then we got the, the M chips that kind of just like saved everything. And it was great. It was absolutely great. It changed everything. But now that type of growth just isn't there anymore with the M3 chip, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Just isn't a reason to buy this computer the same way how the M1 chip was, you know, this reason to pick up the new M1 MacBook, if that makes sense. Now, that being said, if you don't have an M chip computer, then something like the M3 Pro is going to completely change the game for you. Even though it's not that much faster than the M1 Pro or M2 computers, like man, if you're not coming from an M level computer, this is going to be a complete 
game changer for you when it comes to using these devices. But the thing is, is that this video is about the M1 Pro computer compared to the new M3 chip. You know, when I put it through complete and utter stress tests of exporting hour plus 4K footage, when I compared the exporting times, it wasn't that different. Maybe M3 was a little bit faster, obviously, but it wasn't that much different which was kind of disappointing. So if you have an M1 Pro Mac, keep waiting before you upgrade. One thing that I do quickly want to mention is the fact that on these M3 computers, you do get the ability to upgrade a little bit further than you do on some of the older models. On the M3 chip, you can get a higher amount of CPU cores. You can upgrade the GPU cores a little bit more than the past computers. So if you're one of those people that loves to absolutely max out your computers and absolutely, you know, get the highest level spec on the computer that you're getting, then maybe that's a compelling reason to get the M3 computer. But, you you know, for all of us that don't need, you know, 12 terabytes of, of storage, I think you'll be fine. So lastly, and arguably the most important is the price, right? New computer, new price, obviously. So when we look at the old Pro, you can usually find a computer like this going for somewhere around $2,000 Canadian, while the same spec M3 MacBook Pro retails for $700 more. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, is the M3 Pro computer technically better? Yes, it is. But you know, the fact that I can export a video, I think one minute faster than my old MacBook, doesn't mean that it's worth $700 more. Like this computer retails for $700 more than a computer that pretty much, if, if we don't look at the nuances, it can pretty much do the exact same things like almost one-to-one -one the exact same things. I mean, the display is literally almost one-to-one. -one. And the body, I mean, we've already talked about the, the space black color. Man, the space black color was such a miss. So if you're somebody that's looking for a pro level M computer, I would definitely recommend looking at some of the older pro options, just because they're pretty much just as good, but way lower in price. Maybe if it was two or $300 more, I would understand. But $700 to export a video two minutes faster just isn't worth it to me. But what is worth it is you subscribe down below.